Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Say hi to your pets for me. <laughs> good morning, it's New Hunter Church of Christ. We are a real church of Christ. We are on the web. If you go to New Hunter, you want to go up there in your browser section of your Facebook and go up there at the top where it says search, where it says has Facebook, the big F, and change that and write in New Hunter Church of Christ, just like it sounds, and then you'll get right to our website and you can see our webpage right there on Facebook. That's where you can go. Our number, our contact information in there. If you want to make a donation, you can call, you can PM me on Facebook, or you can call me simply by dialing 804-789-9373, and you can we can do credit card donations there. Or you can mail mail it to us at our physical mailing address at 7110 New Hunter Road, Apartment 423, Mechanicsville, Virginia 23111. All right, so let's get into the sermon today. Uh, we're going to be continuing more in in our in our Ephesians study, and we're going to finish up chapter two. Turn with me to to Ephesians two verses eleven through twenty two, and I'll be reading from the New Century Version translation of the Scriptures this this afternoon or this morning. Okay, all right, let's get to it here. All right, this is what it says. This will take us to the end of the chapter. It says, we are all one in Christ. And the Bible text right here, let's start here, says, Paul speaking here, you are not born Jewish. You are not the people the Jews call uncircumcised. It says, those who call you uncircumcised call themselves circumcised says their circumcision is only something they themselves do on their bodies okay says now remember that in the past you were without jesus christ meaning you were unsaved or you were a jew okay uh you were not citizens of israel okay because this is before when before christ came here to solidify that to, to seal that okay and you had no part in the agreements okay the agreements are like with moses and with abraham you know you know those those agreements that were made before the people before jesus came and before the jews were even you know before the jewish jews came about all right this promise that god made to his very people you had uh no hope and you did not even know God because you were outside of Christ. That's why you weren't a part of those agreements, you know, because you were outside of Christ. Remember how we said that, you know, before they could be part of Jesus, we weren't a part of those, but we were not a part of those other agreements because we weren't Christians, you know, whether we were Jew or whether we were Gentile, because we were all unsaved people. It says, but now you are in Christ Jesus. You who were far away from God are brought near through the very blood of Jesus Christ's death on the cross. It says, Christ himself is our very peace. He made both the Jewish people and all those who are not Jews, mean Gentile, one body, one people under Christ. They were then separated as if there were a wall that was put between them. Now, remember, that wall wasn't put there by God, however, uh, Paul's saying. That wall was put there by people. God didn't put a wall between Jews and Gentiles. People did that, okay? And Paul goes on to iterate here. But Christ broke down that very wall, that veil, our wall of hate, by giving his own body. That's where the Son, Jesus Christ, came into the picture. That wonderful tapestry of painting of how he came to, to purge or bring all that together. So we all could be together. All right. So the Jewish law had many, many commands and rituals that went wrong and rules that were associated with it. But Christ Jesus ended all that law. Okay. His main purpose was to make the two groups of people become one new people or one new body that were in him and in his way that would make peace worldwide. Okay. That's what his goal really is, to true God, the living God that we talk about, not some alien living God or some different extraterrestrial, but the real true God. That was what Jesus was when he took that form. Is the same God that wanted to make peace among all people, not trying to find 
demons and aliens or trying to elevate people into a spiritual being, which is what the devil wants to do. And you hear all this hip la hoopla about all that. Uh, but really to bring people to Christ, to bring them as oneness, as one body. It was also Jesus Christ's purpose to end, listen to this, all hatred between the two groups, okay? The Jews and the Gentile. That's, that's the whole world, basically. To make them into one body, one unified body, I'll add, because that's what his goal was and still is today. To bring them back to God. Jesus Christ did all of this with his death on the very cross. Christ came and preached the gospel of peace to you and to who were far away from God, meaning outside of Christ, they didn't know Jesus, you know. They were they had nothing to do with God, but he spoke to everyone. That's why Jesus came, why God came in the form of Jesus. And to those who were near to God, he was giving them, you know, re-encouraging or re you know, boosting them, giving them a boost basically. That's why Jesus came also for those who were faithful to really reestablish that faith, to give them a, a new and clearer understanding, all right, of what all this really means. And yes, it is through Jesus Christ, we all have the very right to come to the Father in one spirit, meaning unified spirit, together as one group, one body that's unified. That means Jews and everybody else, all together as one sect of people. That's what God's chief directive is and still is. All right. Now, now you who are not Jewish or not foreigners or strangers any longer among others. No, you're all recognized as one, the same. It says, but we're all citizens that are together bonded with God's holy, as God's bonded together as God's holy people. It says, you belong to God's family now. You're a part of that heavenly body, that body that binds all, you know, all, all, you know, Generations of people together from the very beginning of time to the present day to the end of the world. I and mean, that's the body, the unified body we're talking about. No extraterrestrial stuff here. No, the real stuff here. Real sauce here. God. Okay. You are like a building, you know, that was built on a foundation of the apostles and the prophets that came before the apostles. Christ Jesus himself is the most important stone or part or cornerstone of that very foundation in that very building, uh, you know, which is the body of the people. It's referred to as a building, Paul refers to, makes mention of that. And that whole building is joined all together in Christ Jesus in one accord. Okay, He makes it grow and become a holy temple in the Lord. And that's how it looks in his sight. That's what. That's the goal. That's the whole goal of all this. You know, what it is in heaven, what it will really truly look like and will be. All right, in Christ Jesus, you too are being built all together with the Jews, meaning all the Jews and Gentiles are all together into a place where God lives through the Holy Spirit that is in each of us. You know, the Holy Spirit plays that part, and that's how we unite together. Now, the title of this sermon, folks, believe it or not, is How God Brings Us All Together. That's what we were talking about this morning. Uh, we live in a world today that is much divided. You know, blacks are against whites. Arab are against Jews. Males are divided against female. You know, with these women right groups and men, you know, groups and all this crazy stuff that's going on, which is not necessary or really shouldn't be taking place. The rich are divided against the poor. You know, as we see in the very first century of the world, you know, the known world at the time, you know, the beginning of the world, we see it was no less divided than what it is today currently. So, you know, so we, we, we make the basic distinction here was the Jew slash Gentile, they were divided. For that very reason, some Jewish Christians had trouble with accepting the very fact that Gentile, you know, accepting Gentile converts because they figured they had to become a Jew or insist it really to the point of by force, even by, you know, violence 
in some cases, that they had to become a, they had to undergo becoming a Jew first before they could actually become a Christian, which is totally not what the Bible says at all. It says that all people can come where they are, and then God will mold and work on them to become one people, one body, united in Christ. As a, that's what it says here. Uh, they become Jews, you know, you know, and that was just not true at all. But look at what Acts, chap, uh, Acts 15 says, and Galatians chapter 1 and 2 say, we're not going to read that for time emphasis, but you need to read Acts 15, it's chapter 15, and read Galatians chapters 1 and 2. This is where Paul goes ahead and lays out and shows all of us in, a, in, in the Ephesian church on how God answered the very world's plea for a oneness, a united body. All right? It was Christ who did this. Okay, Jesus is the one. So when people say, well, you know, they want to explain it away, you know, we got to realize it. So the title of our sermon, as we just read the introduction this morning, is how God brings us all together. Let's go to Lord in prayer and we'll continue on. Dear Lord, Father God, thank you for this wonderful, packed, powerful message to help me to lay this out in such a way that it's really easy for people to understand, but yet a lot of nuggets of wisdom and truth can be shown here today or brought to light to all denominations so we can all realize that we're supposed to be unified in Christ, not be unified on rights and principles or scriptures or traditions, but yet unified on your word and on your true words of your doctrine, of what you say in scripture, of what it says in the gospels. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you do. In Jesus, in your wonderful name, I pray. Amen. So as we read, it brings us to point number one this morning. The former state, you know, how we were before we were even saved. That means before we even became a Jew, you know, under the old way of Moses, the old law of Moses, what I mean by the old way, uh, and how we are as a Christian now, what, how we were before that even happened, what took place in our life now, present time, as well as back then. We see that the Greeks despised all those who were outside their very city gates. They would often call uh, these types of people who were not of their kind or didn't believe the same way, they called them ethene or pagans. Okay, The Jews often um, hated those who were not of their race. Uh, the Jews, they called them goi or Gentiles. So neither group had any use for the other, spiritually speaking, that is. But the Jews had the very edge or advantage. Salvation was of Jews. God had revealed himself through their prophets. And so the Jews had an edge because God came through as Jesus came later on. And that's why they had that advantage to show them what the real truth was. And that's what Jesus did. You know, a lot of people even to this day still have a problem with that. Knowing that Jesus is the one that brought all people together. So we're no longer Jew or Gentile, but we're all one unified body. That's what Paul's saying here essentially here. All right, so the Gentiles were not so blessed. All right, however, and Paul lists five dramatic aspects of their very condition or state. We see Christless as the first one. We see stateless, second, friendless, the third, hopelessness, the fourth, and godlessness, or godless is the fifth. So there's many today who are just like them, how they were back then in those days. It says, do we even care essentially about them? It says, are we even concerned a little or any about those who are different from us? You know, uh, who we separate from us because we think we're better. You know, a lot of people do that with a lot of different reasons and varying degrees, and it's not right, but people do this stuff. Okay, it took Jesus Christ to bring and bridge that unity gap to bring us all together you know out of this division that we see in that very day you know where christ is the very one who alone can do this and do it in our time too as well today that's what we were just touching on the point number two it brings us to the broken wall that wall i was referring to earlier we we'll talk a little bit about that more See, we see the barrier between the Jew and the Gentile was both a figurative and a literal one. Okay, that wall was real, but it was also spiritual too. And it was also uh, mental. Okay, so we see 
there was an unseen veil or wall of hatred that w that stood between the both of those groups, the Jews and the Gentiles. But at the temple, as we see an example of this very hatred in action, in Jerusalem stood a real wall that was made of you know marble or granite or concrete or whatever they used back then in those days. Uh, it was one that kept Gentiles from even entering the temple proper. Okay, So on it were these very words that were inscribed. No foreigner may enter within this barricade, okay, which surrounds this very sanctuary and enclosure. If anyone who is caught doing so will have to blame him or herself you know, for this ensuing death. Okay? So those who were caught actually were put to death. So and it's no different like today when we set sister and brother against sister and brother or brother against brother or sister against sister. It's no different what we're doing today. You know, it's wrong. And today, you know, it's, it's the same thing that's happening when we have different religions against each other because of different beliefs and so forth. You know, it's nothing new under the sun, basically. You know, it took the very blood of Jesus Christ to destroy all that division and confusion. And to tear down that wall, as we read in Ephesians uh, 2, verses 15 through, I mean 13 through 15, what we read earlier. So all people, or all, let me see, I read that wrong. All people, meaning Jews or Gentiles alike, can come to God through Jesus Christ. In his very death, he not only brought harmony between men and God, but he also brought it between men and his fellow chemmen, meaning all people. It says only Christ is, Christ's very blood can save us as a whole. It says only he, meaning God, or Jesus, can break down any kind of wall that there is or exists between us today as well as back in those days. Okay, whether it be eth ethnically or socially or politically, you name it, whatever it may be. Jesus can only be the one that breaks that down. He's a facilitator. He's the mediator, really, and the facilitator. He's the only one. He calls us all weary, despondent, fearful, troubled, uh, braved, okay, disappointments, you know, to himself. It says there he offers reconciliation, peace, and also access to the Father as we see noted in Ephesians 2, verses 15 through 18. Let's go to point number three today. The new structure, verses 19 through 22, talk about what we just read when we first started this sermon. We see that in Christ, the whole building grows into a holy sanctuary in the Lord. Now, William uh, Hendrickson notes it this way. He says that Christ is not only the principle of the church's stability and direction, but also of its very growth as well. So if, you're, if you have a Christ-centered church, your church should be growing. If everything is about Christ and for Christ and in Christ, your church should be growing every day exponentially. And that's what happened back in the day. We have churches that grow today, but they don't grow nowhere near like they used to in the Bible, like it was in Jesus' day. And that's the way they should be even today. And sometimes they may be growing, but they may not all be for the right reason. They may not all be Christ center, even though they might say they are. So you know there could be you gotta see what the motive is behind that growth. But it should always be about Christ and nothing else that causes that to happen. Right, miraculously to happen. Alright. So the Lord I don't know what just happened here. I was just reading here, and this thing did something. I don't even know what happened here. Let me see what happened here. Let me let me stop this for a second because I have something happened here. <laughs> 